On this episode of Artbeat, we continue our coverage of Frozen River Film Festival. First, we'll hear from Mark Brown, director of Galen Lee, The Songs We Sing. The Songs We Sing follows Duluth musician Galen Lee as she embarks on her first tour. Next, we'll hear from Brenda Pikarski, director of Waterway J. Waterway J profiles one man's pledge to pedal all of Minnesota's state water trails in an effort to raise awareness of water pollution. I'm Willard Hike, and you're listening to Artbeat here on KQAL. From painting to photography, from beadwork to woodwork, KQAL-FM on the campus of Winona State University presents Artbeat. Artbeat highlights the work and accomplishments of local artists from in and around Winona. Support for Artbeat is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. So for listeners who might not be familiar, kind of give a synopsis. What's a general overview of your film? Um, it's kind of a profile piece of Galen Lee, who's a musician from Duluth. And uh, the film kind of follows her and her husband on the road as they've kind of made this transition in their life to becoming full-time touring musicians. What inspired you? How, how, how did this kind of pop up on your radar? What inspired you to pursue uh, this concept? Well, I'm a big fan of a Duluth uh, musician named Alan Sparhawk, leader of a band called Low, and he actually met Galen um, up in Duluth. He heard her playing at a farmer's market up there, and they decided to start their own band together, which is called A Murder of Crows. So that's initially, it was kind of through my love of Low that I heard uh, Murder of Crows, and then... Um, a friend of mine wrote a blog piece about Galen, just kind of profiled her, and that was really interesting. And I was like, she sounds like she would be a great person for a short form documentary. Um, so, so a lot of a lot of the film has you know shots of, of Galen on tour and all that. Did you did you go out on the road with Galen yourself? Yeah, that was kind of the whole idea when I talked to Galen. She was, I mean, she actually uh, brought it up. She's like, you should go on a short tour with us. And I did. It was like, I think I was on the road with them for a total of eight days. And we went from, started out in Duluth, hit Minneapolis, went down to Wisconsin, into uh, Michigan, Illinois, Kentucky, back to Michigan, and then on to Ohio. And then they kept going, and I went home. Was that? Have you done something like that before? Was that was that kind of strenuous, being that on the move? Or? Yeah, I mean, I really love road trips and um, you know seeing America, but that was it's a pretty brutal schedule. They, I mean, they were probably driving an average of you know seven hours, seven to nine hours a day, and then she would set up and play a show. So. I was exhausted by the end, and they do that day in and day out. They'll take like two weeks, three weeks off, but they have just been touring nonstop basically for the past couple of years now. Do you have a particular uh, storytelling style that you kind of follow in your films? Whether and, and you know how might that manifest it with things like shots and editing and, and all of that? Yeah, I kind of like to try different things. Um, kind of the first documentary that I made was a story about... Um, serpent handlers like pentecostal serpent handlers who use snakes during their religious services and that that film was kind of a lyrical kind of essay film that i wanted to kind of portray the atmosphere of these really spiritual religious gatherings and kind of the danger of like handling these snakes and then you know the galen piece is completely different it's kind of i pictured it being like a road movie and kind of before we went i saw this kind of like montage where we're kind of like crossing the country and so it was kind of cool to see that come together but this film was like a little more of a traditional style of filmmaking i was going to ask about about some of the shots it looked especially kind of there these opening shots of like the north woods and kind of the duluth area where did you use some drones in there yeah, I used drone. I used a drone, and I think it's such an incredible storytelling tool, and it's really a way to kind of up the production value in independent filmmaking for a pretty low cost. And um, you know, it was kind of a natural fit to introduce Galen, like where she lives, in that way because it's so gorgeous on the North Shore. What's something you hope audience would t- an audience would take away from viewing your film? You know, I hope like that they come into this film um, and like can 
can kind of listen to Galen's music and focus on her like obvious incredible talent as a musician and you know just kind of think of her as somebody who has this incredible skill that she's sharing with us instead of you know focusing strictly on any limitations that she might have in her life and that's kind of how we approached the film too I kind of wanted to um, keep the focus on Galen as a human being who's undertaking a great challenge that a lot of people try and fail at which is to become a full-time musician for a living you know Generally, what, what kind of stuff do you work on? Is it, is it mostly documentaries like this? Yeah, it's, you know, I have a day job where I'm a, I'm a still photographer, so, um, but my passion is doing uh, independent documentary work, and yeah, I've got another project that I'm working on right now that I'm really excited about. It's about a man who robbed uh, 23 banks in the Twin Cities metropolitan area over the course of 18 months back in the early 2000s, and he still holds the record for bank robberies in the state, which will probably never be broken. Um, I mean, he holds it by a significant margin. And kind of the culmination of this film is going to be that he is going to meet a couple of the tellers that he robbed um, back in 2004, 2005, and apologize to them in person. So it's a, kind of a story about redemption and closure. How did you get started with filmmaking? Um, I've always been a photographer. I worked as a kind of freelance photographer, and then I worked at newspapers as a, a photojournalist. And, um, you know, back in about 2008, the still cameras that I was using uh, had this added um, feature of being able to shoot really gorgeous film, video. And it really opened up all of these new storytelling possibilities for me and I was I just really loved the idea that I could tell stories um, in a different form than just photo essays. I could tell deeper longer form stories. Mark, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Now here's Brenda Pikarski, director of Waterway J. Waterway J is about Jay Gustafson, who started a two-year, 4,300-mile journey uh, to raise awareness of water quality issues, and he did that by paddling all 34 major water trails in Minnesota. How did, how did you find out about Jay, and, and what inspired you to profile him? I found out about Jay because he came to the screening of one of my other documentaries, and at the end of the documentary, I reached out to the audience and asked them if they knew of any stories happening around Minnesota regarding outdoor adventure, wilderness sports, and he came up to me afterwards, and we started chatting, and that was that. So something I was curious about watching the film, um, did you and the crew and whoever have to actually pedal along with him when filming? Did you have to go out on an excursion with him, or or cause I noticed there's some GoPro footage in there. Were you, were you guys out there with him on the water? Yeah, so and it's hard to film somebody who's doing a two-year journey because obviously you can't be with them the entire time. So that is one reason uh, why we did the film the way that we did, where we did it with a narration and a script. And we ended up actually filming for three days on the water with him and then supplemented that with footage from his GoPro that he had rolling often on all, the rest of his journey. Now going kind of to your style, to stylistic stuff, um, do you have any particular storytelling style that you employ and how might that, you know, how does that kind of manifest itself with your shots, with your editing and all of that? Yeah, that's a really good question. And that's something I, I think about frequently. And I don't think that right now I have a set style that I would call my own, although I'd like to kind of find that eventually. Um, but what I find is kind of each story requires its own style and often I end up working on documentaries that's very documentary style where it's interview based and you're out capturing the b-roll and trying to capture the moment and those can be really great uh, and fun and interesting but one thing I want to do with Waterway J and that I'd like to start doing with future films is incorporating kind of more of a poetic element and a script um, and doing more of kind of intentional shots as opposed to just kind of like out grabbing what's happening in the moment. Um, so I guess that's kind of where I'm at with style. I'm still developing it. Is Waterway Jay, is he still out and about? Is he still on the waterways? Yes, he is. He actually has two rivers left to finish in this next year. Were there any uh, 
kind of unique challenges that were specific to the tra- to the production of this film? Yeah, definitely. I think as far as logistic challenges, one of the one of the biggest ones was just dealing with filming on a river, which is in constant motion. And the levels are constantly changing. And we were in canoes with no motors. So it was a matter of having enough crew who are along who could handle um, just managing the canoe and steering it and having it facing in the right direction because, like, you know, one end of the canoe is always kind of rotating in one direction or the other. Or you're just slowly floating down river. You had to, you know, maybe throw the anchor and then float to a certain spot and then wait for Jay to get into his spot. And then if it didn't work out, you had to reposition everything to try to set up the shot. So it's just everything is in constant motion. So that was definitely tricky. And then also knowing where the public accesses are, where to get in and out. You you needed to have vehicles at the out access as opposed to the in access, or were you going to try to paddle back up river and get out? So like some of those logistical things were kind of the biggest challenges. How how long did did the film take to 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 produce from maybe like from 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 concept to release? How long was that period? Uh, let's see. Well, this one actually happened pretty fast, um, and we wanted to have it done by August, so that was kind of intentional. I'd say I'd started concepting it probably about mid May. Started really kind of producing and working on it at the beginning of June. We shot at the end of June, and I edited July and August. Well, actually, kind of pretty much finished by the end of July. So really, it was pretty fast, like two and a half months. A little bit of a deeper question now. What's something you would hope audiences would take away from viewing your film? Well, I think the main message of the film is definitely what I hope that would be the biggest takeaway, which is what Jay was trying to do while he was out there, and also what my purpose is with the film, which is just creating a connection between people and water, and asking them to really kind of look inside themselves and and see how they themselves are connecting to water. And, you know, at one point in the script, we say, find your river. And I think our biggest hope is that that's what people do is find their river, that they go out in their backyard to maybe a river they've never thought about getting on and getting in a canoe or a kayak and taking their friends down and just connecting with something in their own backyard in a new way. For sure. I want to kind of turn turn the conversation towards you yourself as a, as a, as a filmmaker. Have you, uh, uh, what, what, what other films have you worked on in the past or what other projects? Yeah, so this all started out with wanting to do something what I call the Among the Wild Film Project, uh, which began with our initial intention was to do four short documentaries about adventure sports in Minnesota. Um, it's, It's definitely grown kind of into something different because now it's been organically growing for about six years. But the two films we do have finished are about the Arrowhead 135 race, which is a winter ultra race that happens in northern Minnesota. And there's also one about Jeff's World, which is about the development of a rock climbing area just beyond the Minnesota border into Canada. So those are the two that we have finished along with Waterway J. So I guess we have three finished now. I think I've seen Jeff's World. That sounds familiar. I think they all were here. Yeah, right. That's that's probably where I'm, yeah. Yeah. Um, You mentioned a YouTube channel, I think, during the Q&A. Yeah, that's kind of a a big shift in the way that I'm working as a filmmaker. Originally, I started with wanting to create films just to get into the film festival world and share experiences that way. Um, But it's kind of grown into now I'm reaching out online and trying to create a YouTube channel. So, you know, definitely if you watch YouTube, check out Adventure Minnesota Films and subscribe to our channel. And I'm really trying to grow grow that channel. And I want to be putting shorter content and kind of broader content on that channel. So that's that's kind of a new experiment I'm working on. Brenda, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks again to Mark Brown and Brenda Pikarski for joining us on this episode of Artbeat. More information on Mark Brown's work can be found at TwinTownMedia.com and Galen's music can be found on all major streaming platforms. To learn more about Brenda Pikarski and Adventure Minnesota, visit Adventure Minnesota on social media and share the hashtag AdventureMN. To stream today's episode or any other episode of Artbeat, visit kqal.org and select the Media tab. I'm Willard Hike. Thanks for joining us.
Artbeat is written and produced by KQAL-FM on the campus of Winona State University. Visit us on the web at kqal.org. Is art an important part of your life? Tune into Artbeat Tuesdays at 12:30 right here on 89.5 KQAL. Artbeat is made possible by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.